Hi, I'm Pat. I'm the guy who by pure accident witnessed the coming horror at the school. I won't tell you too much now. I'll just start the story and you'll see for yourself. But first, give me a like, because I risked my life for my classmates. And yeah, first things first. I was in my senior year of high school. My life was no different than my classmates. Ask me if I was rich or poor. No, my family was middle class. I grew up as a middle class kid, and I differed from my brothers with uh, a vigorous imagination. My parents predicted a creative career for me, hmm. but to be honest, I didn't know what I wanted to study in college myself, but I was the only one. So tell me, which of you got a college education and are not working in the profession you chose? Usually as it happens, the girls sharpen their nails to earn more than the office plankton, and the boys go to repair cars as to not have a completely bad life. That's where we all got help from our teacher, Mr. Billy, and he just told us to call him Bill. He was a young teacher who came to our school six months ago. We liked him for his understanding of our generation. The girls loved him for that. Okay, also for his way of talking, his voice. What else do they like? Oh yeah, his bachelor status. Even our curator looked at him, and she was over 55. Bill gave us meetings after class where he shared our thoughts about life, discussed with him, and he helped us understand what we wanted from life in general. It was with his teacher that had somehow made a connection. Bill discovered my talent and advised me to study journalism. He himself, when he applied, only to be expelled under unknown circumstances. There were rumors that he had done something wrong, but what? No one cared though. Bill shared books and manuals with me, and I actively reread them at home. At the same time, we were getting ready for prom. Here was the hustle and bustle at school. The girls acted like they were getting get married, Brittany's classmate kept yelling that she needed to look stunning. She agreed to pay $500 for makeup in one night. I just wondered what it was all about. I want to get a quality makeup so I can walk into the gym and greet the sunrise beautifully. I'm glad we're not at the South Pole. Why? There you wouldn't wait more than a month for sunrise. I wouldn't like to see what happens to your makeup in four weeks. Brittany twiddled her finger at her temple and left. My friend Tim immediately asked if I had invited anyone to the ball. I'm coming with a special someone. Wow, who's that? Brittany's kind of busy already. It's me. Why? You don't have to wait for her to pick out a dress and comb her hair, and you don't have to stop by and wait on the doorstep for 45 minutes and report back to her dad. We can go together. I'm sorry, man, but you're not my type. I don't have a date either. Let's just go together. Maybe we'll invite each other to do something afterwards. Yeah, sure. The prom was in less than a week. Billy's teacher was in charge of the preparations. He often asked me to draw something for the party, to bring, to take away. He was so responsible that he was always running to the principal's office. One day, I went to Mr. Billy's office on business, but he wasn't in his office. I huh? boldly went to the principal's office. I knew he was there. The door was slightly ajar, and I heard a strange conversation. Do you think this idea will work? Uh, well, yeah, it worked out that way at a previous job. It was an unreal explosion, but the main thing was that no one guessed it was me. Do you think they deserved it? All kids deserve it. Have you ever wanted to blow them all up all at once? Yeah, but I, I was always afraid of like the consequences and everything. We'll do it carefully, quietly and without any witnesses. I listened to this and gradually terror came over me. Huh? Oh God, they, they want what? I didn't finish the sentence, and then the door swung open. Beale came out, embarrassed, rudely asking me what I was doing there. A stack of magazines with pictures of guns and all sorts of explosives fell out of Beale's hands. He quickly picked them all up, cradled them in his hand. I timidly held out a list of things I needed for graduation, and he told me so sternly, go. For the first time, he was angry. That's when I remembered that I'd forgotten my bag in his office and went there. I accidentally touched his laptop. It came out with hibernation mode and all his correspondence with the director open in front of me. It wasn't from the beginning. I've wanted to do this for a long time, but a law kept me from getting in the way. You know how strict it is in our state. I've wanted to do this for a long time, but the law kept getting in the way. You know how strict it is in our state. I worked years ago at another school. By the way, how's it going there with the guns? I've got some options. I'll show you. I'll go into my office. My palms were sweating, and my knees were weak, and I couldn't read anything else. Tim walked in, followed by the professor. I quickly closed the computer, grabbed my bag and Tim's hand, and left without saying goodbye. I told my friend everything. 
but he didn't believe me. You're exaggerating. No, man. They were going to get rid of us at the prom. Remember the rumors about Mr. Billy? They said that he did something at his college and got kicked out. What if he's up to something awful? You mean... Dude, it's not a coincidence. The guns, the explosion, man. We're on the cusp of death. And what do you propose we do? Is your dad still in the force? Uh, yeah. We have to meet with him. We were two days away from day X. I had nightmares at night. I woke up in a cold sweat. I didn't want to die. I didn't want to lose my loved ones. My mother was supposed to come with me, and I couldn't tell her what was happening with us because the cops had forbidden it. I could have ruined the special operation. I looked at her family and thought, what if mom dies and I stay alive? What am I going to do then? What will my father and brother do? Every minute I thought about death. Tim and I barely slept, trying our best to pretend everything was okay. The only thing that calmed me down was the plan of action. We all had to get there. The police would surround the building. The bomb squad, the dogs, and the SWAT team would sneak in. The rest was up to them. All this time, I had been carefully avoiding the teacher, but it was bugging me. Hey, Pat, what's up? Why so glum? Are you afraid of graduation? Don't worry. You won't remember it anyway. Pat, have you picked out a suit yet? Put the black one right away. It looks better. Where does it look better? At the last party. Where else? Huh. Come on, why so serious? Pretty soon we'll be saying goodbye. Forever. His appeal sounded more like threats. But the thought of him killing us was all unsettling. Mr. Bruce, Tim's father, told us not to tell anyone else, especially our parents, so as to not cause panic. The special operation was being prepared. They promised that there would be no innocent casualties. But still, I was very worried. Tim and I arrived at the scene excited. I wore a black suit, well, little did I know, so did Tim. Prom started and we looked at our classmates and thought that, that this was the last night of our lives. And then the principal and Bill came up to Tim abruptly and, and unintentionally scared Tim. And he just screamed, Ah, no, no, don't blow it up. They looked at us. Then the principal turned to Bill and was like, You told me no one knew. And Bill was like, Who cares? Then there was a loud music in the hall and the prom king and queen were called to stage. The principal came out to present the crowns and Bill came up to me and said a few words. It was a pleasure to meet you. You're a smart kid. Sorry to break up. But you don't have to do that. Do what? All this. I'll promise I'll keep quiet about this evening for the rest of my life. Do you think I did this all just to keep people quiet? No. Let them talk. Then the principal asked for attention from the stage, making a speech. He was saying goodbye to us, and my hands and knees were shaken. Suddenly, I looked at my mom. She was smiling and clapping her hands, and I thought that this was the end, that I would never see her again, never hold her and tell her how much I love her. I caught a glimpse of the SWAT team sneaking through the crowd, quietly and stealthily. Then the director yells from the stage, Blow it up! And it's like in slow motion. I run to my mom, throw her on the floor, cover her. Tim, meanwhile, runs under the table. Bill pulls out some kind of remote from his pocket and the SWAT team piles on him. The classmates are quickly evacuated. The principal and Bill are grabbed and handcuffed. Everyone is screaming in terror. Chaos ensues. Everything happened very quickly. We ran out into the courtyard. Honestly, I was waiting for the explosion to happen after all, but no one came out for a long time. An hour later, Tim's father came out to us and called us over. What he told us wasn't just shocking. It killed worse than a gun. Turned out the professor and the principal were preparing a fancy fireworks display for us. That's what was meant by an explosion. Well, what about the guns? Bill and the principal were attending a budding hunters club together. They didn't want any of the students to know about the hobby. They tried to hide this fact. Half an hour later, Tim and I were standing outside in front of everyone. I could feel the anger from my classmates, everyone hating us. And the last thing I said was, Tim, take care of my cremation. Something uh, fancy. If you liked the video, then please leave a like and comment down below.